Melchizedek is a unique and somewhat mysterious figure who appears briefly in Genesis. He is referenced in a messianic prophecy in Psalms and is deeply expounded upon in the book of Hebrews. His appearance in history without any recorded lineage, birth or death implies a timeless existence beyond earthly confines. Melchizedek is depicted as a king and priest whose role prefigures and anticipates the eternal and perfect priesthood of Jesus Christ. This makes him a key figure in understanding the continuity and fulfillment of the Old Testament priesthood in the New Testament revelation of Jesus. Today, we'll explore who Melchizedek is and why his story remains significant in our world today. Meanwhile, please subscribe to our channel, like the video, and hit the notification bell to stay updated. Let's begin. Melchizedek is first introduced in the Bible in Genesis 14 verses 18 to 20, where he meets Abram, later Abraham, after Abram's victory over the kings who had captured his nephew Lot. The passage states, Then Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was priest of God Most High, and he blessed Abram, saying, Blessed be Abram by God Most High, creator of heaven and earth. And praise be to God Most High, who delivered your enemies into your hand. Then Abram gave him a tenth of everything. In this brief account, several key aspects of Melchizedek are highlighted. First, he is the king of Salem, which is often identified with Jerusalem, making him the king of this ancient city. The name Melchizedek signifies king of righteousness, while Salem denotes peace. This association makes Melchizedek also known as the King of Peace. Second, he is described as a priest of God Most High, which is significant because this occurs long before the establishment of the Levitical priesthood through Aaron. Third, he blesses Abram, indicating a position of spiritual authority. And fourth, Abram gives Melchizedek a tithe or a tenth of the spoils, showing recognition of Melchizedek's priestly role. What sets Melchizedek apart is his dual role as both king and priest, a combination uncommon in Jewish tradition, where kings typically rule over the people and priests serve as intermediaries between the people and God. Melchizedek presents bread and wine, symbolizing sustenance and communion and bestows a blessing upon Abram. He acknowledges Abram as blessed by the Most High God the possessor of heaven and earth, and praises God for delivering Abram's enemies into his hands. Abram acknowledges his priesthood by offering him tithes, predating the Aaronic line and the Levitical priesthood by centuries. This unique position highlights Melchizedek as a foreshadowing figure, emphasizing Jesus' eternal role as a priest king in the order of Melchizedek. Melchizedek reappears in a prophetic context in Psalm 110 verse 4. The Lord has sworn and will not change his mind. You are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. This verse is a messianic prophecy and is later interpreted in the New Testament as referring to Jesus Christ. The significance here is that the Messiah is declared to be a priest forever, not in the traditional Levitical sense but in the order of Melchizedek, indicating a different and eternal priesthood. The Levitical priesthood and its laws were imperfect, so a new priest in the order of Melchizedek was needed. Jesus, from the tribe of Judah, fulfills this role through the power of eternal life, not ancestry. The Levitical law was set aside for its ineffectiveness, and a better hope is introduced through Jesus, who is appointed as a priest forever. By God's oath. Unlike the other priests, Jesus lives forever and is able to completely save those who come to God through him. He is holy, blameless, pure, exalted above the heavens and remains a perfect priest forever. Hebrews 5 verses 1 to 7 emphasizes the role of the high priest who is chosen from among people to mediate between them and God offering sacrifices for sins due to his own human weaknesses. It parallels this with Christ, highlighting that he did not appoint himself, 
but was appointed by God, fulfilling the prophecy of being a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. The passage underscore Christ's humanity and divine appointment, noting his earnest prayers and reverent submission during his earthly life, which were answered by God due to his devoutness. Hebrews 5 verses 1 to 7 NIV states, Every high priest is selected from among the people and is appointed to represent the people in matters related to God, to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal gently with those who are ignorant and are going astray, since he himself is subject to weakness. This is why he has to offer sacrifices for his own sins, as well as for the sins of the people. And no one takes this honor on himself, but he receives it when called by God, just as Aaron was. In the same way, Christ did not take on himself the glory of becoming a high priest. But God said to him, You are my son. Today I have become your father. And he says in another place, You are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. During the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions with fervent cries and tears to the one who could save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverent submission. The most extensive discussion of Melchizedek comes in the New Testament, in the book of Hebrews, particularly in chapter 7. Here, Melchizedek's priesthood is contrasted with the Levitical priesthood. Hebrews 7 verses 1 to 3 reiterates the Genesis account and adds that Melchizedek is without father or mother, without genealogy, without beginning of days or end of life, resembling the Son of God, he remains a priest forever. Thus, Melchizedek's mysterious presence foreshadows Christ's unique role and eternal priesthood, highlighting their shared divine nature and significance in salvation history. Melchizedek appears in history without a recorded genealogy, birth or death, suggesting a transcendence of earthly limitations. He symbolizes Christ, who also surpasses earthly limitations as an eternal king-priest, uniquely appointed with no predecessors or successors in his divine role. The author of Hebrews argues that Melchizedek's priesthood is superior to the Levitical priesthood for several reasons. First, Abram paid tithes to Melchizedek, indicating Melchizedek's higher status. Second, Melchizedek blessed Abram, and according to Hebrews 7 verse 7, the lesser is blessed by the greater. And third, unlike the Levitical priests who died, Melchizedek's priesthood is portrayed as eternal. These points highlight Melchizedek's unique and enduring role, making him a prototype for Jesus Christ, who would fulfill the ultimate and eternal priesthood. Hebrews 7 verses 11 to 28 emphasizes that Jesus is a high priest in the order of Melchizedek, not based on ancestry as with the Levites, but by the power of an indestructible life. This eternal priesthood is seen as perfect and capable of providing complete salvation, unlike the temporary and imperfect Levitical sacrifices. This highlights Jesus' superior priesthood, which requires a change in the law and provides a more perfect and lasting way of salvation. Unlike the Levitical priests, Jesus does not need to offer sacrifices repeatedly, for he sacrificed himself once for all. Thus, Genesis introduces Melchizedek, Psalm 110 links him to the Messiah, and Hebrews chapters 5 to 7 explain Jesus' superiority as the great high priest. The dual role of Jesus as priest and king highlights his unique authority and position as the eternal mediator between God and humanity. This underscores his superiority over the Levitical priesthood and points to his everlasting reign and eternal priesthood in the order of Melchizedek. As we await his return to establish his physical kingdom in Jerusalem, we recognize Jesus as the true King of righteousness and peace who brings spiritual victory and blessing to all who come to him. And that concludes today's episode. We sincerely appreciate your presence. If you enjoyed our content, please consider hitting the like button, sharing it with your friends, 
and subscribing to our channel. Thank you for your support.